Hey guys, Brandoni Productions here. Now, I received a email from 2010 Techno Geek asking, "Hey, is it possible to make it so you could make your program in Visual Basic 2008 a 30-day trial?" Now, I can understand why you might want to do this. You might want to create a trial program, have it for 30 days, and then have somebody buy the actual full program. Well, luckily, I've been experimenting after I received this email, and I figured out how to make a 30-day trial. So, first thing you're going to do is just start a classic Windows Forms application, as usual. So, I'm just going to name mine 30-day trial. Sounds good, right? Then you're going to press OK. Alright, so now that we have our form, we're pretty much going to do nothing in the form. But, uh, what we need to do is actually double click on the form. And first thing we need to do is actually set a few variables. So what we need to save is the day, the month, and the year. So the date of the current person's computer. So we want these variables to be used all around the program. So they need to actually be declared as public. Public variables are just being able to be used anywhere in more than one form, in more than one window, whatever. But when you public um, variables, they need to be above private subs. So just under public class, but above the subs. All right. So we're going to public day as a string. We're also going to public month as string. And we're also going to public year as string. Now, public is just like the dim command, where that's all you have to type. All right. So when the form loads, we're actually going to declare those variables as day is going to be equal to my.computer.clock.localTime.day. Now this is just getting the day of the clock of the user's computer that is uh, running the program. We're going to do the same thing with month. Just get the month of the computer's clock. Clock.localTime. Dot month, and the same thing with year. My dot computer dot clock dot local time dot year. All right. Now all these day, months, and years are stored in numbers. So the day, if it was the 28th of January, the day would be 28, the month would be one, and then the year would be I don't know 2010, whatever year it is. All right. So now that we declared our variables, the next thing we need to do is actually create settings. Settings are um, things that are saved inside the program and stay saved when the program closes and then reopens. So to access the settings, you're going to press Project and then the Properties. Then you're going to go to the Settings tab. And we need to make four settings. The setting for the day, setting for the month, setting for the year. And then we also need to make a setting called Checked and make that a boolean. A boolean is a variable that can either be true or false. So we're going to make the starting value false. And yes, it's just, yeah. You'll see why we're using that in a second. OK, so when the form loads, what we first need to do is get the uh, date that the program was first run in, so we can tell when 30 days has passed. And we use this with the setting. So. First, we're going to check if the program has already been checked for the date before. So if my.settings.checked, which remember, you ju we just made this, equals false. Now, if it equals false, that means that no, we haven't declared these settings. So if it equals false, then we're going to declare all these settings, day, my.settings.month, and my.settings.year. We're going to set all these to the current day month and year. All right. And then since we set them, we can now change my.settings.checked to true. This will make it so the program will register that the setting is true, so it can skip this step of declaring the current day, the current month, and the current year. Now after we declared the current day, the current month, and the current year, we can start checking if 30 days has passed because this is, this is going to happen on the first day they get the program. All right. 
So it's pretty much saying if it has already been checked, we're going to check if the days are the same. So if year, so if the current year equals my.settings.year, if the current year equals the year that we started the program at, then nothing is going to happen because the trial hasn't expired yet. But if the year is different, then we're going to send a message box out. Your trial has expired. Because if the year is different, 30 days already passed, pretty much. Now, there are some problems with that, like say you bought it on December 29th, and then it's January 2nd. But we're not going to worry about that, because this is just a basic introduction. So. If the year is the same, then we're going to have to check the month. So if the month is the same, oops, if the current month is the same as the stored month, then yes. So if they're the same, then the trial obviously has not expired because there, there can't be, you can't have like 30 days in a month. You know, you know what I'm saying. Else, so if they're not in the same month, if month equals my.settings.month plus one, then, now this can also be, say you bought it on January 22nd, and now it's February 2nd, and it's checking. So that's a new month. So if it's a new month, nothing happens. Else, if month equals my.settings, or if month is greater or less than or greater than my.settings.month plus one, then message box trial expired. So since we've got that set, if the current year is the same, and if the current month is not the same, and it is not the next month, then the trial has to be expired because it's either uh, like a month before it or a month after the month after. You know. Okay, so now we're going to put more stuff into this one. If the month is the next month, then we need to check the day. So if the day equals my.settings.day, then, so if the day is the same, then it has been 30 days because there are 30 days in a month. So if the days are the same and the next month, the trial has expired. But if the day is not the same, then we need to see if it's if it's greater than. So like, say it's the 11th and you bought it on the 12th. We need to see if the current day is greater than the stored day. Right, so if the if the current day is greater than the stored day, then the trial has obviously expired. But since we said greater than, when it's less than, it will do nothing. Just because. Well, so this is the coding on how to make a 30 day trial. Sorry if you heard that car drive by. Stupid teenagers living down my street. <laughs> So this is the code on how to make a 30-day trial work. Hopefully you enjoyed my explanation. Um, there's no way to test this right now because I can't go 30 days into the future to try this out for you. So yeah, I'm really hoping this code works for you guys. If it doesn't, please shoot me up a message and I'll try to conjure another one that works for you. Um, but yes, thanks for watching. The more advanced tutorial in words will be the link for that will be in the description. And thanks a lot for 2010 tutorial or Techno Geek 2010 Techno Geek. Thanks for sending me that message. And make sure you subscribe for my new tutorial that's going to be out soon on how to format coding to make your code more organized. All right, so thanks again for watching and have a great day.